nice view, isn't it? Welcome back to Secondhand Overland. I'm your host, Matt Kester, and today, as you can see, we're here in the Kester family compound in western Montana. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the KG UV8H from Ocean. Now this isn't a new radio, nor is it even a radio that is new to me. I was sent this thing like six months ago from our friends at Buy Two Way Radios with a promise that I'd do a review on it. And well, I can't put this thing down long enough to talk about it, that's the problem. You see, this is my new favorite radio. Uh, well, my previous favorite radio was a KG935G from Ocean, which is the, scaled down and locked out brother to this that only transmits in GMRS frequencies. Well, that familiarity, the way that it feels in my hand is just so good and it also has that same black, dark backgrounded screen, that LCD, that beautiful one that kind of sucks out here in the light, but it's so good everywhere else. Uh, that really drew me to it. Now it also does have a 1000 channel or 999 channel frequency and tone combination bank to it. Uh, like every other Ocean Radio we've reviewed before, it comes in the box with a charger, your battery, your antenna, and a really nice easy to read manual in plain English that makes it very easy to just jump right into this thing. It does not include a programming cable, but it does accept the standard K-type plug programming cable, so I'm sure you might already have have one of those and the software is available for download to program it if you so choose at buy2wayradios.com. Now I pulled this thing out of the box, fired it up, got right into it and the thing that I liked the most was, well, the familiarity. This has the same beautiful dark black backgrounded display as the KG935G and that, that's the thing I fell in love with with that radio first that drew me to it and then after using it, uh, well, I liked how it fit in my hand and the functionality and everything just felt right and that's carried over into this radio with a bigger feature expansion because well this is a dual band ham radio. Now let's go ahead and preface that with saying that because this is a dual band ham radio you do need a technician license to operate it or at least press the push then talk button. And in addition to the features that you saw in the 935 it also works as a cross band repeater which means you can actually use this little guy if you need to, uh, I don't know, extend your signal beyond the mountain or something. Like say you're back here backpacking in these mountains and you go down the other side but you still want to talk to me down here. You can take a crossband repeated radio, set it up there on top of that mountain, and as you go down the other side, you'll be able to communicate. Like, say, set this thing up to receive on the UHF frequency and then transmit it back out on a VHF frequency or vice versa. That's how a crossband repeater works. So you do need a radio that's capable of transmitting in one band and at least monitoring in the other to make that work. But still, it's a nice workaround and it helps you to communicate over distance for the cost of an extra radio. It's an ocean. It's built well. It's built just as good as every other ocean I've ever held. Uh, this one's taken some knocks. You can see the screen. I drug it across the ground. It was clipped to my backpack and uh, it ended up falling over on the radio and drug across the rock. Scratched the screen up, but it didn't crack it. It didn't break it. And it is also IP66 rated, which means it's not completely immersion proof, but uh, it is dust proof and it will withstand a steady volume of water in a stream, which it's so subjective as to what that is, I don't know, but suffice it to say, it's been out in nature, it's been backpacking, it's been everywhere I've gone, and it still works. Let's just test out how, how well it works. Um, and it's a good thing that on this particular trip, I ended up bringing a dual band radio because there is no GMRS coverage where I'm at. It's just non-existent. However, there are a lot of ham repeaters and that's one of the things that pushed me into being into ham radio is that I go places that GMRS just isn't always available plus all of the other technological things that you can do with a ham radio but accessibility is one of the key points. So let's go ahead and check it out. KK7 DRQ repeater check. Now this is just a close by repeater. And this is on this is VHF. KK7 DRQ. Anybody available for a repeater check? No, I guess nobody's there. KK7 DRQ, any good contact? I'll be clear. So that was a local VHF repeater. It's within about five miles of me. Let's go ahead and see if we can shoot one down the valley down here, about 18 miles away to the town of Hamilton. KK7 DRQ, repeater check. See if we can get a contact. We got the tone back. 
Well, no traffic here. JK7 DRT, and make it a contact. I'll be clear. All right, so nothing off of that one. Let's uh, let's try the big city down at the other end of the valley. That's Missoula. Maybe there's more hams listening to a repeater in Missoula. Let's let's see what we can do. This one's this is about 30 miles away, and there's actually some topography in the way. So let's let's see how we are. KK7 DRQ repeater check. We got a tone. KK7 DRQ, anyone available for a repeater check? Well, we're hitting it. Nobody's hearing it though. Anyway, I know it works. Nobody's listening, but I know it works. Anyway, there's a whole list of repeaters in repeater book I'll look up later, but that's that's a moot point. Point I'm trying to make. Uh, it's a great radio. I've been using it a lot. Um, I've been using it. It has replaced every other HT I have. This is the one and only that I use. And uh, you can read between the lines when I tell you that it's replaced every radio that I own. That includes the 935G. Uh, it's a great radio. I would not hesitate to tell you to purchase it. Um, there are a couple of things that you should be aware of. It doesn't have USB-C charging, which uh, they're working on. I think that they've heard us talk about this enough that the vendors and the suppliers are starting to push that out. So uh, I don't know if maybe a future iteration of the UV8 will come out with USB-C on it or if they'll do a battery hack or whatever. But uh, that's one thing I would love to have seen improved on this. Also, it does suffer from that same problem of having the screen not as easy to read in the bright sunlight here as the 935 did. Whoopity do. Okay. It is a great radio, and you can buy it with confidence, knowing that buy two-way radios is going to stand behind you and support it if something should happen down the road. But in my experience, I have yet to have an issue with any of the ocean radios that I own. With that being said, until next time, I'm Matt Kester. Check out the channel at Secondhand Overland at all of the usual suspects. Until next time, be good.